Hey y'all, it's Mary Hyatt, and I'm so excited you're here for this month's topic, which is all about body love. This is one of my absolute favorite things to talk about because ladies, we can't even catch a break during COVID. The body shaming, the body bashing, the body comparison is still at an all-time high. But I want to help you find a little extra love for your body this month that leaves you feeling pretty freaking great about yourself. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the Living Fully Alive podcast with Mary Hyatt, here to help you find your authentic voice, learn how to love yourself, and embrace your life. And now, your host, life and mindset coach, body love advocate, and doTERRA presidential diamond, Mary Hyatt. Hey y'all, it's Mary, and I'm so excited for the first episode of this month's topic, which is all about body love. And I can't think of a more perfect time to be talking about body love, body acceptance than right now. And today we're going to be getting into really understanding our body bully. That's where we're going to begin. And I've got several more episodes this month that are going to help us dive deeper. And for those of you who joined the Fully Live Circle membership, first of all, shout out to you guys for taking that leap to really step into the work, the devotional practices, the journal prompts, the meditations, the essential oil blends, and the sisterhood community of getting together and taking this topic and going deeper. So if you are a Circle member, just know that these podcasts this month are going to be amazing and the content and the resources that I provide in the membership are just going to help you go even deeper and actually do the work to implement and integrate what you're hearing here today and throughout the rest of this month. So I'm just so excited for my new members. It's so fun. I started this membership. I've got so many of you guys in the private Facebook community. It's awesome. And I've actually gotten several emails since we closed the cart for people who are wanting to still get inside of the membership. If you are wanting that, if you're curious about it, go to maryhyatt.com forward slash circle, maryhyatt.com forward slash circle. The link is below. You can click on it. Um, but that gives you all the details and you can get on the wait list. Um, it's closed currently, but the next time I open it, you will be the first to know. So sign up for the wait list, maryhyatt.com forward slash circle. Okay. So Y'all, we all have a body bully, all of us, especially as women. And right now, given the fact that if you're listening to this in real time, we are in the midst of, for most of us, still in some form or fashion, like in stay at home COVID pandemic land. (laughs) And there are like so many just really shaming memes that are going on right now on social media about, you know, the quarantine 15, which... I know for me, it's a quarantine 20. (laughs) I had to go out and buy new clothes yesterday because my clothes simply do not fit. And there's a lot of shame around that. There was kind of at the beginning of this, if you guys remember, like all this emphasis on getting this amazing body during this time and, you know, utilizing this to start a new diet, to exercise, to work out, to get your body ready, to come back on the scene, you know, when all this lifts. And I know that for a lot of people, there is a, a huge cloak of shame, body shame that is happening right now. And so I just feel like it's so perfect to talk about body love and acceptance this month, and particularly today, your body bully. And if you think about a body bully, you know, a bully that starts very early in the morning, you know, its job is to remind you that something is wrong with your body, that you don't measure up, that you're flawed in some way. It starts when we walk into the bathroom, when we turn on the shower, we undress only to look at ourselves in the mirror and think, ugh, you know, God, you're so fat, or oh my God, you've gained this weight, or oh my God, look at your wrinkles. You know, maybe you're walking out in the deserted streets of wherever you live and you catch a glimpse of yourself in a shop window and you go, oh my God, my stomach is huge. You know, or maybe you're just in the middle of your day and you glance down and you see your thighs and you think, how did I let my freaking thighs get so big? They're disgusting. You know, or you're having sex and you shift your eyes to your stomach and you think, oh my God, I'm so fat. How is he even turned on right now? What if he notices? What if he doesn't actually want to be having sex with me? It never takes a break and it carries on all day. 
Only when we fall asleep do we get some reprieve from our body bully. And our body bully is really clever. It aims straight for the heart and its ammo is shame. And so I want to get into this today and see how we can begin to shift this inner internal conversation with ourselves. So let's define the word bully, since that's the word that we're going to be using a lot today. And as a verb, the bully as a verb means to threaten, to hurt someone, often frightening that person into doing something. And as a noun, it means a person who threatens to hurt someone, often forcing that person to do something. Now, the interesting thing about both of these bully definitions is that it talks about forcing or frightening a person to do something. When we are talking about the body bully, this particular bully forces us to do penance for how disgusting we are. Like when our bully starts talking and we internalize what it is saying is truth, our only option is to repent. We have to obsess, we have to cower in fear and try to make sure that this bully doesn't get angry again almost like how we would handle a real abuser. And so the penance is we diet, we work out excessively, we restrict our food, we get surgeries, we go buy new clothes, we get new makeup, we get the Botox, we get the fake eyelashes. I mean, maybe not currently during COVID, but certainly before. I mean, I can't tell you, like the list goes on and on. I've been hearing from all my girlfriends, like, We went to dinner uh, last night because we had a restaurant that first opened at 50% capacity. It was one of my friend's birthdays. And it was so fun. We were like, oh my God, we're out. You know, it was like really exciting to be out and in a real restaurant, you know, and they were taking all the right precautions and everything. And so we were sitting down and this is the first time we'd really seen each other since all the lockdown happened. And my friends are all in their mid forties. And, um, One of them, she said, she goes, girl, she's like, this is the only time you're ever going to see me without Botox. (laughs) She was like, look how much my forehead moves. And I'm like, oh my God. And for me, I've never gotten Botox. I've never gotten fake eyelashes. And still, and even these are like my best friends, you know, it made me think, oh God, they're probably noticing all my wrinkles in my face right now. Like I've got to go, you know, think about getting that, even though that may be a choice that I don't want to decide to do that body bully was coming in hot and coming in strong. And then sometimes the body bully kind of has an opposite effect on us. Instead of like wanting to go, you know, run to fix ourselves, we rebel, we binge, we stop caring. We kind of like throw up our middle finger and pretend we don't hear it. And we go into denial, but that bully is still there. And so we put on layers of protection to pad ourselves from our own abuse. And y'all, both are active, or both are reactive, whether it is anxious response or an avoidant response, both are an unhealthy response. So let's get to know your bully, because my firm belief is that our bully exists for a reason. All bullies became bullies. They weren't born that way. You know, you think about a child, they were hurt or they were harmed in some way by someone else. And so they begin to hurt, to hurt and to harm others, right? It's like the same was done to you. And so as protection, they do it. And the same is true for our own bully. Our body bully in some way was developed for our survival. This passionate hatred towards our body originates from some other story because somewhere along the way, there was a moment that you were bullied into believing your body wasn't good enough. And y'all, we are bullied or body shamed from really early on. And I've done a lot of different courses, like my Babe Redefined course, um, which is six weeks to make peace with your body. And inside of that course, you know, people are constantly sharing stories where they remember the first time they were aware that their body wasn't good enough. I can remember mine. It was in the fifth grade. I was sitting at the lunch table and one of my friends decided to go around and ask everybody how much they weighed. And I can remember in fifth grade, I was like exactly 100 pounds And I was a healthy kid, average size, but that number was met with a lot of nervous faces from my little friends. Apparently, unbeknownst to me until that moment, that was too heavy. And that day after school, my friend suggested to me that we go on a cabbage soup diet. Y'all remember that? (laughs) Yikes. Where for five days, all you eat is cabbage soup, which is just disgusting in and of itself. Um, 
And then she was like, well, maybe we'll do the peanut butter and banana diet that her sister, her older sister who was in high school was doing. And I can just remember as a little girl feeling so embarrassed and ashamed of my body, thinking like, how could my body be against me? And we learn that the only way to survive with a body that is against us is to hate it. And so we hate our bodies with such a passion and we attempt to belittle it, berate it, abuse it, bully it so that maybe we appear stronger and in control because deep down, it's because we have that shame. We're embarrassed. We're hurt. We feel like we're not good enough and we think we can bully ourselves into changing so that we can be loved. And our body bully, this is what's so cool, can actually shine the light on our wounds and be the catalyst to heal those memories, heal those moments of hurt, those misbeliefs that we have about our bodies and our appearance. So I want to take a little inventory and see how vocal your body bully is, okay? So just take a moment and think about the last 24 hours. Think about getting out of bed. Maybe you got into the shower. Let's just pretend you took a shower yesterday, okay? (laughs) You probably did it given that it's quarantine, but let's just say in a normal day, getting into the shower, Think about when you looked in the the mirror, you were getting dressed, trying to pick out clothing. Maybe you were looking through social media, running around with the kids. You know, think about all the interactions online or in person that you've had over the last 24 hours. So whether that's with your family, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your friends, strangers on the internet, chances are a lot of people on social media right now. And think about if you moved your body. So if you went on a walk, if you happened to do an exercise video at home, and then kind of think about all the food that you've eaten and prepared in the last 24 hours, which I don't know about you guys, but this is like the worst part of quarantine. (laughs) Like, what are we going to eat today for this meal? And let's clean up the kitchen again. (laughs) But just think about that relationship to food, what you've eaten What was your body bully saying during all of those moments? Just think about that for just a second. You know, most of us let our body bully ride shotgun and its voice is so familiar that in some ways we've almost like tuned it out and we forget that it's even talking. We don't even realize that through all those little moments, it's saying something to us like nothing fits me. The shirt is too tight. I need to go on a diet. I look gross, disgusting, ugly, fat. God, I feel so fat. I want to die. Ugh, everybody looks thinner than me. Why am I the only person that gained weight during quarantine? What am I going to do when I actually have to go back out in public and I have to wear real clothes? I'm going to be so embarrassed. You know, my butt, my arms, my stomach, my thighs, whatever it is, are too big. What was your body bully saying to you? You know, you need to get it together. You need to eat better. If you eat this, you're going to gain weight again. And if you gain weight, nobody's going to love you. And y'all, our body bullies are so clever. Our body bullies bully us in three ways. And I want to bring some clarity around this. I want to bring some awareness to this because we need to understand the agenda of our body bully in order to make peace with it, in order to meet its need and to remind ourselves and our bodies that we are loved unconditionally, no matter what. But our body bullies bully us in three ways, and we have to understand this first. The first way is through body bashing. And this is where we pick apart everything on our body that is not perfect, and we bash it, we judge it, we criticize it. This is where our body is letting you know that you and your body are not good enough. Your thighs are too big, your hair is too flat, you've got too much gray hair, your eyelashes are too small, your eyebrows are too thin. Your arms aren't toned enough. Your ass isn't round enough. This is body bashing. When we literally take apart our bodies and we offer shame into the conversation, they're not good enough. They're broken. They're flawed. They need fixing. So that's the first way that our body bullies bully, body bashing. The second is body checking or comparison. Ooh, this one is a toughie. I, this is one that I just have a hard time with. And that I'm consistently having to do work around. And this is where every time you see someone else, you size them up and see where you fit. Your body bully is going to make sure that you know exactly where you stand. If you are better, 
If you are prettier, if you are uglier, if you are skinnier, if you are fatter, you're going to know it. That body checking, that body comparison. So it's like you're scrolling on social media and you're checking, where do I fit in this? Am I going to be loved or accepted if I, you know, put myself next to this person? Even if it's a stranger, even if it's a dear friend, it's like your body checking. How do I relate to, how do I add up to the person who is quote unquote next to me? Even if that's somebody you've never met before, even if it's social media, it's kind of like, all right, now I know where I stand. Now I know how lovable or unlovable I am based on the fact that I'm being compared to this person. So that's the second way, body checking, body comparison. And then the third is body shame. Y'all know this voice. This is the voice that says you should have tried harder. Everyone can lose weight, but you, what's wrong with you? Well, you were born this way and you're never going to be able to fix it. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're an embarrassment. Don't go out, cover yourself, buy bigger clothes. Something's wrong with you. No one's going to talk to you if you look like that. No one's going to want to have sex with you if you look like that. No one's going to follow you. No one's going to buy your products. People are going to laugh at you because you're gross and you're ugly. Y'all, I could literally do this dialogue all day long. Like that's how well I know this body shame voice. Ugh. And it just leaves us feeling like we are not enough. And so our body bully is clever. It body bashes, it body checks, and it body shames. So let's see what that voice triggers in you. Because if we start noticing extreme behaviors that almost like feel like they come out of nowhere, like um, let's remember the, let's remember just for a second a time when we were not stuck at home all day, every day, or even fast forward and kind of thinking about coming out of this and what this is going to look like as you start to relate with people and kind of get with other people. But when you start noticing that you are skipping out on gatherings, parties, whatever it might be, when you start feeling the need to crash diet or cleanse or excessively work out, When you begin reading tons of health books, listening to podcasts, consuming all kinds of crazy information to find the answer, to seek to find the answer that will change your body. When you start noticing yourself like avoiding mirrors, avoiding sex, not buying new clothes, not putting on a bathing suit, binging, purging, restricting, you know, the list can go on and on. These are sort of these extreme behaviors you can be 100% sure that this is a reaction to your body bully. Hey y'all, I just wanted to interrupt this episode real quick to remind you to subscribe to this podcast. I know that emails get lost in your spam folder, so subscribing means my episodes come right to your phone. So go ahead, hit that quick little subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the Living Fully Alive episodes. Plus, in addition to subscribing to the podcast, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I don't know if you know this, but I have been releasing guided meditations every Monday over on YouTube, and you're not going to hear them here. So if you've been wanting to start an easy meditation practice, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on my short 15 minute guided meditations. All right, now back to this week's episode. So... I like to ask myself, anytime I start seeing these behaviors pop up and I start getting a little obsessive, I start feeling fearful, I start like making the plan, you know, (laughs) all right, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to start on this day. I'm going to choose this program. We kind of start getting like a little cuckoo, you know, a little crazy. I ask myself, and this is a question to ask yourself as you're beginning to notice some of these triggers, what thought triggered this behavior? What thought is making me obsess about my stretch marks around my hips? What thought is making me eat this whole bag of chips? What thought is making me work out six days a week when my body is exhausted? What thought is making me cry every time I have to go find some clothes in a store or at this point online? What thought is making me say no to the gathering? 
more no to the future vacation because I know I might have to be in a bathing suit and I'm going to choose somewhere where I don't have to be in a bathing suit. All of our behaviors originate from our thoughts. And in this case, those thoughts are the voice of our body bully. This bully, these thoughts are what is driving us to react. And the good news is if you can make yourself believe that you are ugly and disgusting and gross and unfit to be in a healthy relationship, going that you're going to be alone forever or that you're going to be left because of your stomach, if you can make yourself believe that, you can make yourself unbelieve those thoughts too. Because every thought is subjective. Just because we think it does not make it true. We can actually choose to think something different or choose to believe something different. Just because that you've been telling yourself all of your life that no one is going to love you until you lose another 10 pounds does not make it true. Just because you've been telling yourself that the only way to make sure your husband doesn't cheat on you is to get your hair done every four weeks and now you haven't been able to do that and that feels really scary doesn't mean it's true. Just because you've been telling yourself that doing a juice cleanse is going to fix all your problems does not make it true. As Jen Sincero, she's the author of You Are a Badass, she says, we can literally create the reality we desire by making ourselves think and believe what we desire to think and believe. How awesome is that? That is why we had to get really good at challenging our thoughts and becoming aware of the voice of this body bully. And then we can go to work at intentionally curating a new kinder, more compassionate, more loving inner dialogue with ourselves. We can actually have control over this. And I know that in my own life, I did this. I changed the way that I was speaking to myself. I was in a way able to quiet the voice of that body bully. And there's, there's a step for this. There's four steps, actually, to shifting our internal dialogue because that's where we experience freedom. When all we have yelling at us and screaming at us all day is this voice of hatred, this voice of fear, this voice of shaming and bashing and checking, we don't stand a chance, y'all. Like in that setup, you have to diet. In that setup, you have to be obsessive. In that setup, You have to do all the things to make sure that you add up so that you are loved. That is the point of the body bully. The body bully's job essentially is to make sure that you get the love that you are craving. And it has conditions. It has rules. It has criteria that's informed from childhood and the, you know, relationship that our mothers had with their bodies. It's informed by culture media, our current standard of beauty. It's informed by our partner, maybe their preferences, maybe comments that they've made. It's informed by our friends and our community, what women talk about, what women obsess about, what women collectively feel like they have to do together, even just to be received and accepted in, you know, female to female community. Sometimes I think that women are harsher critics than men. And so, The body bully, in a way, is trying to serve us, is trying to love us, is trying to protect us, but it's doing it in a way that, of course, is really trauma producing, really hurtful, really painful. But there's nothing that motivates somebody to do something like shame. Nothing. If you feel horrible about yourself and the only way to not feel horrible is to do A, B, C, and D, you're going to do it. And so it is effective. The body bully is incredibly effective. Like think about the history and the relationship to your body and all of the things that you've done. Literally just take a moment and think about all the things that you've done to shift and to change your body. The ways that you've molded it, the ways that you've in a sense like whipped it into shape quite literally, the ways that you have starved and restricted and dieted, the things that you've done for the sake of being loved, accepted for beauty, the pressure that you've felt, the fear, the obsession, the focus, 
It's intense, right? And so to me, to begin to shift out of this and come to a place where we can really deeply love and accept our bodies is begin to speak to it in a new way. To change that internal dialogue. And to me, when I think about how do I want to relate to myself? How do I internally, when I look in the mirror, when I get dressed, when I'm kind of coming face to face with the fact that I've gained weight during this period of time, during COVID from all the stress and the trauma and uncertainty and just, you know, all the things that we've done and the way that our bodies respond so beautifully and intelligently, how am I going to choose to relate to myself during this? To me, I've got two options, right? It's like, I can abuse myself, berate myself, shame myself, judge myself, criticize myself. How dare I? Why didn't I do this? I should have been stronger. I should have worked out more. I should have eaten less. I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have. Till we're like shitting all over ourselves, you know? And that is, of course, an option. And that's a very well rehearsed option for most of us. And I can tell you, it's going to send us into a spiral. Or... Option B, and this is the one that I want to talk about here, is to shift the dialogue to speaking to ourselves kindly, tenderly. It's almost like I imagine my body as though it was a little girl, or you might want to imagine it as like a daughter. How would you speak to her? Like if your little self, your little girl, your daughter was in front of you, standing in front of her, in front of you, how would you speak to her? What would her tone of voice be? sound like? No, sorry, what would your tone of voice sound like as you spoke to her? What would the language be that you would use as you communicate with her? What would be the cadence? What would be the, the, the specific words that you would choose to make sure she knew she was loved unconditionally? And that's how I like to think of this option B is to speak to myself in that same way as though I was a little girl, my body was a little girl, my daughter, And to begin to shift that, to notice when, oop, that bully's creeping up, and then to begin to shift that language. So let me kind of go over my four steps briefly on how to shift this internal dialogue from bully to, let's just say like mother, you know, like a real compassionate, nurturing one. So the first step is to identify the voice, to identify your bully, to notice, oh, I am bullying myself, like whoa, I got to like have that awareness and ask myself, ooh, whose voice is that? Challenge it. Whose voice is that? Who says? Who says I've got to do X, Y, Z, be this weight, lose, lose this amount of weight, get on this diet, cut out this, cut out that? Who is saying that? Where is that voice coming from? Where did that begin? Where did that start, right? So identifying the voice, oh, my body bully is speaking to me, that awareness, that is the first step, identifying the voice. The second step is to acknowledge it. A lot of times we maybe hear it and then we think to ourselves, oh, I shouldn't be thinking this. Oh my gosh, I let myself bully myself again and we kind of go into more shame over the fact that we're bullying ourselves. But I think what's really beautiful and we create this relationship with our body is the second step is to acknowledge it in a way that recognizes and acknowledges that we've been triggered and this body bully has come into play again to protect us, right? The agenda is protection. I know it's dysfunctional. I know it's backwards, sideways way of doing it. But in a way to acknowledge it and say, bully, I hear you. I I really know that you're afraid that you're not going to be loved. I really hear that you're scared that you're going to be abandoned, right? It's like acknowledging the fear that is coming from the bully. Again, bullies are creative, right? They're not just mean for the sake of being mean. So acknowledge it, like not try to ignore it, not try to deny it, not try to pretend that the voice isn't there, but almost like you would address like a little kid who is having a temper tantrum or who is a bully and be like, baby, I know you're scared. I hear you. Acknowledge it. So we have to identify that there's a voice, that the body bully is present. And then second step is to acknowledge it, validate it, hear it, see it. Really like make sure that bully knows, hey, we're right here and we know something's going on. Now the third step 
in shifting this internal dialogue is to challenge it. Do I want this to be true? And this is sort of where we get to draw a clear boundary. This is where we can acknowledge it and hear it and just say like, hey, baby, we're not going to talk to ourselves that way. Okay? Like asking yourself, do I want this to be true? Do I want this to be true? Do I want this rule or this condition upon my lovability based on how I look to be true? Do I want to keep believing that? Do I want to keep this blueprint and this recipe for earning love? Is this serving me? Is this helping me be in my highest self? Is this creating space for love or shame? Am I doing this out of love or am I doing this to earn love? So we challenge it. Do I want this to be true? And probably 10 out of 10, the answer is going to be no. No, I don't want it to be true that I have to lose 10 pounds before I'm happy, before um, somebody wants to be with me, before whatever, I'm successful, whatever it might be. Now, that's a really crappy setup. I don't want that to be true, actually, (laughs) you know, or like, I don't want it to be true that this body doesn't get love right now, the size that I'm in. I don't want it to be true that if I'm this size, it means X, Y, Z, the interpretation we give it. Challenge it. That is the third step to challenge that bully and draw that boundary of like, nope, we're not going to do this because it doesn't serve us. And it's just a setup that we'll never be able to win. So then our fourth and final step here is to call in our loving self, that mother energy, that nurturing energy, kind of thinking about, okay, how then once you've identified the voice, you've acknowledged it and validated it, and then you've challenged it, this is where we shift. We call in our highest self, our loving self. How would you speak to your daughter? At the end of the day, y'all, we just want to know that we are lovable. So chances are that is what you're going to have to tell her. And it might sound something like, oh, sweetie, you know, once you notice this body bully is coming in, which is really stemming from a fear of not being loved, meeting that, calling in your highest, most loving self and in really consoling, comforting with empathy and compassion, that part of you that is afraid. So it might sound like, oh, sweetie, you are so loved. Your body is perfect the way she is. And I know that it's been through a lot. I know that you're stressed or scared or whatever it might be. But I want you to know that you are fine just the way you are. I know you're self-conscious. I know you don't feel good. But you are not broken. I love you just the way you are. And you know what? I'm so grateful for your strength, for your ability to get through this really stressful time. You have been so brave. You have been so brave. And I know that it's been really hard and a lot is changing. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful for your energy, for the way you've been protecting me. You know, kind of like in a way, offer any kind of gratitude for the different parts of your body and its functions, for the way that you went up the stairs, for the way that you are, have breath and can breathe in life, for the energy that you had today. Offering gratitude for those things and just, you know, really be there in love and compassion to your body. Like, body, I know you're working so hard to keep me healthy and I see you. Thank you. This is so beautiful. And I do this by journaling. So eventually you'll get to the point where you can do this sort of off the cuff. And as you notice this body bully and you, you know, kind of in real time, go, ooh, that's that's getting triggered. I'm starting to get obsessive. I'm starting to, you know, body bash or body check or body compare or body shame. Ooh, what's this about? Oh, my body's getting triggered. My body, my little sweet self is getting triggered. You know, she's afraid she's not going to be loved. Okay, how can I acknowledge her? How can I begin to challenge that voice and then say, nope. And then this is where I, I, you know, call in that loving self and in real time, kind of talk her off the ledge, you know, talk her off the cliff. But at the beginning, it's really helpful to journal this out. 
And you can kind of just like write out these four steps, identify the voice, acknowledge it, challenge it, call on the living self and kind of like go into a dialogue with your body. So I love to think of myself um, and then my body is a separate self. Like obviously I'm all totally one, but I think of her as her own being as with her own intelligence, with her own wounding, with her own uh, hurts, with her own fears. And so I'm going to go in through journaling and talk to her, like literally go back and forth and really like kindly speak directly to my body as though she were this little girl and affirm her and love her unconditionally, accept her, help her to find safety, to feel safe in whatever's going on. If she's scared, if she's fearful, Speak directly to that. Let her have a voice. Let her dialogue with you. And I literally, in a journal, I'm literally going back and forth as a first person having a conversation. I'm just writing it out. It is so beautiful and healing. And this is how you begin to shift that conversation, that internal dialogue from shame to love, with tenderness, with love, with grace, with empathy and admiration. Brene Brown says, practicing self-love means learning how to trust ourselves, to treat ourselves with respect, and to be kind and affectionate towards ourselves. This changes the dialogue. This is a practice that through time, you can identify that bully and then begin to affirm and remember that you are worthy of love and respect just as you are, especially from yourself. You cannot bully your way to loving yourself. Let me say that again. And I want you to like really let this sink in for just a second. You cannot bully your way to loving yourself. It is not going to work. Your body bully is not your body. Your body is on your team. She is your ally. She is your friend. She is your partner. There's this beautiful quote from John O'Donohue, who is an Irish Catholic priest and poet. And he says, your soul longs to draw you into love for yourself. When you enter your soul's affection, the torment in your life ceases. Is that just not like so amazing? That torment of life ceases when you were drawn into love for yourself. This journey back to this remembrance starts with the decision to choose love over hatred. It starts with admitting that hating your body, sorry, hating your way to a body you finally love and accept hasn't worked. That trying to be smaller, trying to be more beautiful, trying to shift and be that chameleon and to change man, that doesn't work. That doesn't earn us love. And listen, I am not like saying you can't go get your nails done. You can't go get your hair done. First of all, I'm not saying (laughs) you need to listen to me at all in regards to that. You get to define the things that make you feel beautiful, the things that you love and that are elements of taking care of yourself. I love getting my nails done. I love getting my hair done. I've got a lot of gray hair coming in right now. And you know what? I'm not loving it. But I still love myself, right? It's not like I have to get my hair colored or I have to get my nails done in order to love and accept myself. No, those are just ways like icing on the top of a cake, you know, that that help me connect with myself, to love myself, to, you know, shower myself with some little pampering that make me feel more feminine, that make me feel more beautiful. And you get to define those things. But it's coming from love, not to get love. That's the difference, coming from love, not to get love. And so this is a real invitation to acknowledge this body bully, to empathize with what it's trying to get for you, that love for you, but then to challenge it and then to validate the part of yourself that is so afraid that she's not lovable in this body, at this size, with everything that's going on. You know, being kind to ourselves means we stop with the blame, with the guilt, with the punishment, with the pain. And we introduce grace and love and understanding. 
and compassion. And so I hope that through our conversation today, that you have that permission to shift that inner dialogue, to change the way that you're talking to yourself, to be kinder, more loving to yourself. And y'all, I know this is a tricky time. I know there's a lot of stuff that is coming up right now. So give your body grace, love on it. Slow down today to ask, what do you need? Touching your hand on your belly, touching your hand on your heart, asking yourself, what do I need? Meeting yourself with that love. And as always, share this episode with somebody who needs to hear this right now. Because if you're like me and your girlfriends are talking about all the things that have to do with appearance and weight and are being really hard on themselves, share this. They need it. We all need it. I need it. I need to be teaching this to remind myself right now. So y'all, thank you for being with me today in this conversation. I'm going to be on here next week with my co-host, Lindsley Brooks. We're going to be getting into more of this topic of the month in body love. So don't miss out on that. But until next week, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great and to be full. I'll see y'all next week. Bye. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some amazing nuggets to take home and start implementing into your life. And if you're looking for the show notes and links, head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash show. And if you loved it, why not bring your girlfriends along this journey of becoming fully alive with you? Just give a quick share of this episode to your social channels and enjoy those debriefing convos with your besties. Thanks again. And I can't wait to connect with you next week.